This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. Merck Animal Health, a leader in otic treatments for over 25 years. Welcome to Chats with the Chatfields. This is a podcast that's going to expand your idea of what impacts veterinarians, pet owners, and basically all animal lovers in the galaxy as humans. We are your hosts. I'm Dr. Jen the Vet with Cozette. And I'm doc- oh my gosh, I forgot you were going to say Cozette. I'm Dr. Jason. I have no pet. So there we go. <laughs> if you have not yet subscribed to our show. Why not? Just go to chatfieldshow.com and subscribe today. And if you want to reach us and uh, you can reach me with any message full of love and positivity at jen at chatfieldshow.com and if you want to reach me myself and i for anything real you got to keep it real when you email me now no no warm fuzzies you can reach me at jason at chatfieldshow.com i guess you can count my, my panda bear back there I don't know. yeah you got a panda bear on your pillow yeah. um so i'm so excited i have cosette with us the farm fresh frenchie in the chat room even though she really would like to go get a treat. Um, now she's really looking super excited about this. I know, but do you know why I, do you know why I have her here today? Uh, because you want to? Because look at one of her most exciting features, mm-hmm. which is? Wrinkly skin. <laughs> well, actually, that is more appropriate than you might know, Dr. Jason, for today. Because into the chat room for her encore hopefully not to be last appearance we're bringing a dermatologist <laughs> perfect but, but let's but we're going to talk about a very specific skin right and not not her not her terrible noisy breathing not that that's that's a whole four or five episodes right just on her noises that's how she communicates is her uh, grunting okay. but look at this look look right here ah uh, must be the ears oh, ears must ears, be the ears, ears. ears. Right. it's ears everybody so I thought I would show everyone some really spectacular dog ears right here. And we'll just bring her in. So today's guest is none other than Dr. Millie Rosales, our very favorite dermatologist from Miami. Um, And she is appropriately on social as at Got Itchy Pet. Um, So (laughs) Dr. Rosales, And tell me, because I just call you the very best dermatologist in Miami, but you have a practice there and it is called? Miami Veterinary Dermatology. Miami Veterinary Dermatology. <laughs> so if you're in South Florida, you better look up Dr. Rosales. But um, we are going to talk all about ears today. And Cosette is very excited. She's also very interested in my headphones. For some- <laughs> oh. Anyway, so I'm going to put her down. Oh, okay? thank goodness. Is that it? You're stealing the show. <laughs> I know, but we love her so very much. She's so cutie. Okay. Yeah, she has such a wide range of emotions, that dog. <laughs> you know, her 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 most common emo- uh, emotion is happy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. I can't anyway, another word, but okay. Anyway, Dr. Rosales, you know I love the Frenchers. Um, and I know you do too. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if you do too. Yeah, you just assume everybody loves these Frenchers. I, Give me a break. I, I know. Force your beliefs on everybody else. This is terrible. I, I, it is horrible. So, okay, Dr. Rosales, if we're talking about ears, not about wrinkles, but about ears, what is your favorite breed? My favorite breed? Frenchies are probably up there. Yeah. Oh yes. My gosh. They're See? my number one patient. <laughs> See, number, my one, number patient. one patient. Yes. Are they really? Yes, Frenchies wow. and actually doodles are probably the next patient I see, and I see them with ear wow. problems too. That's great. Yeah. I, I heard that doodles were like the perfect dog, which is why, you know, they're $8 million a piece and everybody seems to have them. I know. I guess yes. not. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so we're jumping right into it. So doodle owners, listen up, right? Because we, we are going to talk about ear infections, otitis, all of that sort of thing. Um, so for for ear infections okay number one let's start with the basics do dogs get ear infections yes they do (laughs) okay right like yeah i guarantee you when she when she asks a question she's not wanting my answer (laughs) (laughs) right so let's assume every question is directed at you (laughs) (laughs) okay so all right so dogs get ear infections um 
And I'll just get this out right from the jump too. Does it mean that you're a bad um, pet owner if your dog gets it or a cat gets an ear infection? No, no, not at all. No, it, did, um, did, those of you guys yes. watching yeah. the video, you should have seen her face fall. Like, oh, no. How not dare you all. say that? No, never. <laughs> no, it, that's no. true. And and I agree, but I see so many pet owners that when I say, yep, we got an ear infection, they're like, oh, they're so like embarrassed, right? I yeah. know. And it just happens. What? It just happens. Yeah. 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 And I think one thing there is sometimes some owners think maybe they did something wrong. Um, like maybe they gave their dog a bath and water got in their ear and it was something that they did that caused the ear infection. And actually a lot of the times it, it is not. So, so that's going to probably be a, a good one to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a great lead in to, to, to what we can talk about <laughs> next. Yeah. <laughs> what causes these ear infections in dog? If it's not poor parenting or poor ownership, what causes these ear infections? Yeah. Yes. yeah. So the, yeah, the majority of the time why a dog gets an ear, and I'm going to say dogs because actually cats don't commonly get ear infections. So the majority of the time why a dog gets an ear infection is, is because of an allergy. Um, and typically it's an allergy to maybe something they're eating. So in their food or something environmental like pollen allergies. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we jumped into a bunch of like causation and stuff like that. So I will tell you that I had, uh, I can use one hand to count the number of cat otitis cases or ear infections that I've seen. Everyone comes in and they're like, oh, my cat has ear mites. Why does your cat have ear mites? Well, they're scratching at their ears that's not necessarily why. Right. And I look and I'm like, Oh, it's cause your cat has fleas. Number one, right. Your cat, I mean, right. your cat has fleas. You're just seeing them scratch at their ears. And then, right. uh, but, but I had two weeks ago, I had two cat true otitis infections in the same week. And I thought I should hop the plane to Vegas. This is crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> cause, because the odds are, it just doesn't happen with cats. Right. right. Uh, yeah. so, uh, anyway, so yeah, so, so cat folks, you're out of the woods there, except for the flea situation. That's all you, why um, is that? Why doesn't it happen with cats? This is a very, very fair question. I think. I don't Anybody know. That's a good question. I, I mean, it's not like it couldn't happen. I mean, allergies could affect their ears, but you know, for whatever reason, it's just really not as common, but what Jen said though, if, if a cat has an ear problem or there's itchy around their ears, yeah, it's important to make sure they don't have mites. Or another big one is um, more so in young cats, they can get polyps in their ears. So that would uh. be really maybe one ear unilateral. So one ear would probably have the problem and then yeah. it can cause a secondary infection. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So cats are just super pets is what you're telling me. We don't know why, but then nothing bothers them. <laughs> you know, perfect. but it may be a good thing because cats are not very oh. good to examine or examine yeah, the their worst, ears. So right? <laughs> holy moly. Yeah. yeah if they it don't wasn't, like things in their ears. That's for sure. If it wasn't the cat's idea to get their ear examined, they're not down with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yes. treating a cat's ear is probably not a lot of fun. Exactly. Either. Yeah. 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 Yes. But, so. but you got to do it. You got to be consistent. Helping us there. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, the universe is definitely looking out for veterinarians on that front. Um, okay. So, uh, I do, we are, look, so that's our cats. That's cat ears right there. Cat Done. ears in a nutshell, <laughs> right? Done. please polyps, sometimes mites and just bacterial and yeast. It's and good it's luck very treating rare. them. You're on your and, own. No, no. But, but the other thing is like one more thing on cat ears, because after we do cat ears, we're going to take a break and then do dog ears. So everyone like prepare yourselves. That's the schedule. The other thing about cat ears, in my experience, and Dr. Um, Rosales is going to tell us what hers is, is um, the sooner that you get them looked at, the better, because they don't get better on their own, mm -hmm. right? What's your experience, Dr. Rosales? Right. Yeah. I mean, in general, with any ear problem, yes, the, the sooner you address it, the better. Yeah. Okay. All Usually. right. I think that's all about cat that, ears. That's the opposite of my <laughs> typical, how I approach my own health, right? I just typically ignore stuff. <laughs> oh, what's that? Just don't look at it as it goes away, right? That's not, you're saying that's not good advice. I should, I should address things. All right, I'll take that. Yes. Note, note mm. to self, stop ignoring. You know life. what? Okay. You know what? Also, like I told him this when we were growing up, you can't just keep throwing everything in the closet and close the door when you're supposed to clean your room. Yep, works. Like it doesn't, I, I mean, until the closet's full, then what do you do? 
right? So <laughs> it's the same spot. thing. That's with when ears. you move. You get another house. Oh, that's when you change, move. change, change right. jobs. Right, right. I thought you would get another kid so that you'd have to get another room and that, then you have another closet. That, yeah, that, yeah, that runs out quick too, though. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's cat ears in the nutshell. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we're going to take a very short break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk all about dog ears. So dog lovers, we got you. See you on the other <laughs> side. It's Dr. Jen, the vet. And I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Keith Latson. He's got an incredibly interesting story all about full bucket health. My college roommate and vet school housemate, Dr. Rob Franklin and I were collaborating on some cases. Both of us were struggling with diarrhea in some of our patients, whether it was after a procedure or after after an illness. So we created a formulation, but we didn't want to just create a formulation. We also wanted to create a movement in animal health for being able to help animals in need through the use of our products that we developed. That really has resulted in our one-for-one giving program, which we're really proud of, as much as we are our formulations for dogs, horses, and cats. And so if you want to know more about their one-for-one giving at Full Bucket, or if you're interested in better supporting your dog, cat, or horse's digestive health, head over to fullbuckethealth.com to learn more. Summertime is otitis externa time for many dogs. Did you know that otitis externa affects up to 20% of dogs? And when it comes to otitis externa, the right therapy makes a big difference. Merck Animal Health offers a complete line of solutions that veterinarians can trust. Hey, PAC listeners, your continuing education code for this episode is... CC220011. Okay, so now we did cats. Now let's talk about dog ears because I see a ton of dog ears. I know you see a ton of dog ears. Um, Cosette has a ton of dog ear uh, as a Frenchie. So you said there was two breeds that you see most often that have ear problems. And that was doodles, anything doodle. Uh, and then you see Frenchies a lot, which kind of surprises me, but because in regular practice, I see a lot of dogs with ears that are what I call flop ear. They lay down on their head instead of mm-hmm. erect ears, like Frenchies that stand up. But you said Frenchies have a lot of ear problems. Yeah. And I think maybe it's just the population here in Miami. A lot of pet owners just have Frenchies. I think Frenchies a popular breed. Frenchies have a lot of skin problems, skin allergies, and just kind of automatically um, a a dog with allergies is probably going to have ear issues. Not all of them, but Mm -hmm. some of them do. But but yeah, the top would be Frenchies, Doodles. I mean, but I will. I'll see Cocker Spaniels, English Bulldogs, Mm -hmm. Labradors, German Mm -hmm. Shepherds. Yeah, I would would have voted Cocker Spaniels for sure, right? Yeah. Uh, Before going to vet school and learning about all that kind of stuff, it was always the the ear, the dogs with the ears that are floppy down, cover up all that area. They're they're the worst. I was sort of surprised when you said, uh, you know, Doodles, right? Because that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just think they're becoming a popular breed. Right. Right. And so now we're seeing that, um, yeah. but I'll see a lot, all sorts of other dogs. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, that, that's what I think is interesting too, is that, um, you're, you can't really pick a breed and say, and now I don't have to worry about ear infections. Right. right. Like I think any dog with ears can get an ear infection. Yes. Um, yeah. And so, um, what, so like for pet owners that are listening, Um, let's start with like signs of ear infection. Yes. Okay. So, um, the obvious, so itchy ears, um, the ear may actually look red from the outside. So irritated, red, smelly, um, you might actually see a discharge. Um, maybe they're shaking their head a lot, shaky. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it can get pretty bad if the ear infection gets a little bit more deeper where they'll start head tilting and they'll be painful. Mm-hmm. So those are, are pretty the obvious signs, but I can say I've been in situations where, you know, maybe it was just a, a stoic dog. And, you know, when we do our full exam, we're like, we always look at the ear and we look inside. I'm like, Oh my gosh, there's yeah. 
an ear infection here. Surprise, and that's when right? an owner's like, oh my gosh, I never noticed anything. And and that could be completely possible. So yeah, I think it is important in a regular physical exam when a pet mm-hmm. owner goes to see their their vet, you know, why an exam visit is important because the ear is hidden. You know, you can only see the outside, but things could be going on on the inside mm-hmm. that you may not be aware of. And so what and- do you see? So for the clients who see you sticking that your eyeball in there, that, that little instrument and in fancy, <laughs> what, what is it that you see that you say, oh my gosh, that's an infection. Just, you know, just for the, the non- veterinarians who are listening yeah. as an out of care, they're probably like, what is it? Do they see like a whole party of bacteria going on down in there? What, what is it that you yeah, see? Yeah, no, that, that? that's an awesome question. Yeah. So yeah. the um, device is, it's called an otoscope. Oh, so otoscope. Similar yeah. to what, <laughs> yeah. otoscope, similar to what um, your medical doctor right. would use to look at your ear. And, um, and this is actually good for even general vets to know, like you're looking at the ear canal and it should be nice and open. It shouldn't be swollen or red. You're looking to see if there's abnormal discharge. A little wax is normal, but maybe ah. an excessive amount of wax or pus is not normal. I would say um, pus is not normal, right? No, I would say. It's not normal anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally um, not normal. Oh. And then you want to, we always want to make sure the eardrum is there. We should be able to see the eardrum. Is it intact? Um, does it look normal? So those are the things we we, we look for in an ear. Yeah. So I got to tell you, I, I I know I'm taking over for, for Dr. Chatfield, but I don't, I don't care. Listen, it's about her, her dog. I was, I, I, we were concerned about it at the farm. And so we went to look in her ears and I shined a light in one ear and I swear the light came out. Uh, I could see it on my other hand on the other Come side on. of the head. No. Right, right through. Is that, is that normal? Is that just a Frenchy thing or what? What's Come happening on. here? No? <laughs> Should we be concerned about this? I mean, it kind of explained a lot, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know how that happened. No, no, no. Dr. Dr. Millie says no comment. Dr. Millie says no comment. But you know what was true about that is that when they did that, she looked really pretty when they did it. (laughs) You don't have to be smart if you're pretty. Um, But anyway. So thanks for enlightening everybody on what what you see down there and what you see on a bad ear and a good ear. Very cool. Because I'm sure people are curious. What are they looking in there? It's super cool, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a a video otoscope. So think of it like a little endoscopy of the ear. So I'll have that in the exam room. And for a patient that's, you know, pretty calm, I'll show the owner. Like, hey, oh. this is what I'm seeing in the ear. And yeah. um, and I think, yeah, that helps a lot, especially. Do they when like it? Do the owners like it? I think yes. I would love it, right? If I didn't yes. know what was going on, yes. I'm like, that's they, so cool. They love it. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, not all pets are amenable to that, right. you know, but the ones that are, I just, it does kind of um, huh. make clients understand better what's going on inside yeah. their dog's ear. Right. Well, because so for me, like when I, when I flip up an ear, like, especially on like a, a pit bull or something like this, or a pit bull mix, those dogs are very stoic. And so when I'm doing an annual exam um, and I say, Hey, any issues you guys are concerned about anything going on? And they say, no, 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 dogs are doing great. We're basically just here because we need vaccine boosters and the right. exam. And I've, flip up the ear, right? If the ears are, are flopped over, they're not cropped or anything. And I flip up the ear and it looks okay. Right. Maybe it's a little hyperemic, a little bit reddened because the dog's excited or it's really hot outside, whatever. And I look in that canal (laughs) and the dog just sits there, but I look down in that canal and it's on fire, Mm. right? It's swollen. I can't really push all the way in. There's just that black or Brown waxy gunk exudate um dish, like everywhere <laughs> and i'm looking and i'm like oh my god this ear is on fire but the dog is looking at me like what else Whatever. do you have you know like they don't care <laughs> hold but my like, beer yeah. right but being able to show right here can you hold my beer yeah um <laughs> but when i take that sample because we i like to run cytology ear cytology yes on all of those to see what the population is. So when I take that sample and I pull out my little um, swab and it's got like bloody, gunky, (laughs) black, nasty, they go, they had no idea. And then they instantly feel terrible because they're like, that has to be painful. You know, Um, that's very demonstrative to owners. And that's why we need to look at your dog or your cat or your guinea pig every year. Right. Yes. Um, absolutely. And so, uh, so we do cytology, um, how valuable do you think that 
doing cytology where I take the swab, I roll it on a, a microscopic slide, we stain it and I look at it. How valuable do you think that cytology is? Do we need to do it every time or not? Yes. Yes. Super valuable. Yes. Anytime there's a sign of an ear infection, um, that exudate, that discharge needs, needs to get a sample. And just like you said, you need to look under stain it, look under the microscope and see what kind of infection it is. It could be bacteria. It could be yeast. Um, sometimes, um, you know, yeast typically has this kind of yucky rancid odor, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's not the diagnostic indicator. We need to take a sample and, and do a cytology. So that's why your vet always asks, you know, to do run tests. And that's why it's important so that then we can choose the right meds for that infection. Yeah. Right. And so Jason, you cannot appropriately select medication for ear infections with a scratch and sniff. Yeah, I was going to say, can't you just stick your nose down in there and smell and be like, yes or no, the positive test? No. Yeah. no. But but there's a lot of owners. Like I, I was it. already getting a reaction from your from your description. Like, ah, I know what that smells like. I was backing up. It was, you know, anyone who's smelled it knows what I'm talking about. But there's so many owners that come in, and I don't know if it's on the internet or whatever, and they come into me and they're like, I, I know it's yeast. I just need this. Or I just need that. Definitely, then, definitely Dr. Google situation. It, it is, right? Do you get a lot of that too, Dr. Rosales? We will, especially with some patients that have um, allergies and then just one of their presentation of their allergies, just getting recurrent ear infections. And they're like, well, look, it was just like the same one, you know, six months ago. I want the same right. that. I'm like, right. yeah, it may look like that or it may seem like that, but we need to, you to come in. We need to look at the ear again, take a sample and just mm -hmm. confirm that. And then so, do you, do, do you do a recheck, um, a recheck your cytology towards the end of the medication course? I, yes. Yes, okay. I typically do. Yes. And are you so looking, you have to do a follow-up, mm -hmm. check the ear again, do a cytology. Yes. And are you looking mm -hmm. for nothing or like if you get like occasional yeast or occasional, or like, what are you looking for on that? Does it have to be totally clear or what are you looking for? I'm looking for totally clear. And if okay. there is occasional, mm -hmm. but the ear looks completely normal, yeah. then, okay, I feel like I've got it. I, you know, maybe they just have to finish up on whatever they have left of their eardrops. And, and mm -hmm. I think we're going to be good. But that okay. follow-up exam mm -hmm. is really important. Again, to look inside the ear because the client can only see so much from the outside, but yep. who knows what's still going on in the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the other thing that I like to do too, and see, I don't know if, if all the chatterboxes know that when we get an expert in the chat room, it's very helpful for some of us veterinarians because we like to say, Hey, I do this. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that still okay? A friend, a friend of mine asked this question. Once. Right, I'm asking so, for a friend. Right. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll do like a, a low dose anti-inflammatory injection at the outset okay. of treatment because I just feel like the pet is so uncomfortable. You know, if I look in that ear canal yes. is so are you, on fire. Are you are you saying anti-inflammatory because you don't like to use the right word? That, a little that, bit, a little right. bit, a little, bit, a, little, bit a, little, a little, a little, a little steroid, yeah. <laughs> but a very low dose, like, you know, like a half a for keg or a quarter of a for keg. And, you know, it's out of the system in, you know, 48 hours. It's just so that they're more comfortable immediately. Cause I don't want them to continue shaking their head. Yes. And then they're yes. coming back to me for an oral hematoma. <clears throat> right. Yes. Yes. So. I think it's incredibly important to use an anti-inflammatory. Oh. When I say it, it's you need to use a steroid. There you go. I mean, me. <laughs> there you go. Four letter word. There might be, you know, a, a mild otitis where, you know, a vet may feel like they don't need to, but I think in a lot of cases um, mm -hmm. they do. And I think a lot of vets are afraid. I mean, a lot of vets are afraid of steroids. Clients Not are afraid. afraid of steroids. Clients Not don't afraid. Not afraid. <laughs> steroids yes. and uh, just for everything you said Jen it's, it's it's they're painful if you don't take that pain away which a lot of it is inflammation mm -hmm. it makes it really hard for the client to apply the medication properly um, yeah, that's the, 
Well, that's the other thing I'm like, like, because some dogs don't want you to touch their ears, right? They're not yeah. stoic at all. They're to- yeah. <laughs> totally appropriately yes. dramatic. They act like-, like I would act, right? If it was me with an ear, right? it's 100%, I'd be screaming, hollering, don't touch it. I don't yeah. care. Ignore it. It's yeah. going to go away. Right? And so I feel like it's, it's not fair for that client, like that owner and pet relationship. If I say, go home and medicate this ear, even though it's so painful, you can't touch it without him yelping, you know, yeah. do this. So, yeah. So um, I guess that's a little bit also like my um plea to pet owners who were listening please let your veterinarian <laughs> give yes, yes. there's a lot of clients that are afraid of steroid administration too exactly uh, you know which which can be a appropriate fear right we don't want long-term use of steroids that's just masking um but yeah right and it's not you know and, and when we do it we're like this is not meant to be long term it's, it's right. going to be and i like to do oral steroids um and maybe because some of the cases I see are probably more, more severe and they yeah. need that steroid over about a two, maybe three week period. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course there's going to be patients like a diabetic patient who right. just can't get steroids. Can't, so yes, right. there's going to be certain cases where right. your pet cannot get steroids and I'll try to compensate with a topical steroid, mm-hmm. you know, maybe in addition to the ear medicine to mm-hmm. get that inflammation down or pain meds. Um, or a non-steroidal. I mean, anything that will help that inflammation, although non-steroidals tend to like we go for the big gun, right? Of the steroid, if it's truly that inflamed, but um, those ki- those kids, those kids, those uh, dogs with chronic <laughs> recurrent otitis, I mean, it just can be so, so inflamed. I can't even get like the cone of my otoscope down in the canal. So, um, yeah, so please, please, please let your veterinarian do diagnostics and let them give an anti-inflammatory Do you guys injection. have a lot of clients that, that really uh, are against the steroid? They, they've been educated one way and it's like, and they just don't want to have, they hear steroid and they think absolutely that's the devil. I know a lot of veterinarians kind of come out of school and I'm trying, not trying to say that because they, there are some issues with long-term steroid use, but, mm-hmm. but when you get out there, you realize the benefits of, especially a short term, like Dr. Jin said, you know, you got to be able to get the inflammation down before you can do, you got to be able to treat the dog right. Uh, before right. it gets better. Uh, but do you guys have a lot of, of humans like the, the clients who are, who are like, totally, yes. really, yes. yes. Even if you they explain do. it and say, Hey, the, or, no, or, or does it take some explanation? Right. I think yeah. it takes some explanation. Like, it takes right. some explanation. I'm not, putting your dog on a right. whopping dose. I mean, there's a range with steroids. You could do anti-inflammatory right. or you could do immunosuppressive. And, and right. maybe they're, they don't understand that. Yep. Um, it's your steroids bad. Right. Right. And, yeah, that's, right. That's and then yeah. there's short acting steroids. There's long acting mm-hmm. steroids. Um, we're doing this tapered. So in probably two weeks, it's going to be, we're going to stop. But if you, we don't do this, you're not going to be able to medicate properly. And then the one other thing is, those ear canals are so inflamed and, and closed, just like Jen said, you couldn't even get like an otoscope right. in the ear. If we don't open up that ear canal, it's hard for medicines to get deep down into the ear. And so we're not treating it properly. That's right. when your video otoscope comes in handy. Look, you can be like, look, treat this, it's, right? stuck. it's stuck, it's <laughs> stuck. Right? right? Yeah, ah, so right. when they see that inflamed ear, they're like, okay, you know. Do whatever um, you need to doc. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because yeah. then I think it's helpful for them to realize, like, I know your dog is scratching sometimes during TV time in the evening, but the ear is really on fire. Like your dog is really uncomfortable. Right. Um, so I, for me, I'm yeah. like, oh my gosh, please come early. Don't come late. But uh, if you come late, that's okay too. Just show up uh, because <laughs> it's not going to get better. Yeah. Okay. So I also um, would like to get kind of like tips from from you, Dr. Rosales, on like, because I know some ear infections can be prevented, right? Um, some, some dogs are just going to kind of deal with it more often than others, even though we can prevent some of them. Um, so what are, like, do you have, um, you know, your kind of your top tips for pet owners for preventing ear infections? So... I'm going to say it, 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 it's hard to prevent only because um, back what I said at the beginning, the majority of the time why a dog mm-hmm. gets an ear infection is because they have an allergy. Right. Yeah. And so 
it's important. So that's what we call the primary cause yeah. of the ear infection. If your vet tells you there's a yeast infection bacteria, but that's secondary to the allergy. So how do we prevent? We got to stop that allergy. So Control if it's a allergy. food allergy, yeah. don't feed your pet what it's allergic to. <laughs> and so your pet's not going to get that allergy anymore. So your vet may say, hey, I need to do a diet trial to figure yes. out what food is causing your pet to get ear infections. And that may be hard for some clients to understand that, oh, yeah. my dog is eating something bad. It's causing an ear problem. It, it's hard. Like they may understand their dog being itchy on their skin, but right. not affecting it's, their I, ear. It's I, almost impossible, I would think, for them to yeah, understand. Know, it doesn't make any see, sense, right? To, to, I know. What? And, and I can't eat a dogs. hot dog. My, my ear hurts. <laughs> right, exactly. break, right? so. And some dogs will just have ear problems. Right. They will have no skin yep. problem, but it's ear problem that is due to the food. Um, so I guess prevention would be, hey, let my vet figure out the allergy so that the ear infection doesn't come back. Right. Um, now, dogs that have environmental or pollen allergy. Hello, Florida. Yeah. Harder. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, um, that is a little harder because we yeah. got to figure out how to manage the allergy mm -hmm. so that your dog doesn't keep getting ear infections. Um, yeah. You no, know, the, I guess another to add to all that, and I had mentioned it earlier where Clients think, oh, they got their dog is swimming a lot. They're getting water in the ear. They yeah. bathe their dog. They got water in the ear. Those are not really primary causes. It's they're not a thing. Problems. No, they're, they're. I mean, I'm not going to say that your dog got dirty water in its ear. You know, maybe dirty lake water or dirty grooming water. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Dirty ear cleaner, um, and it got an infection. Um, but, but the majority of the time it's because your dog's ear was probably already maybe inflamed because of the allergy. We went swimming, got it moist in there and just made a nice little bloomed. Petri dish for infection. Bloomed. Yeah. Even, even yes. now, a lot of clients come in and say, oh, I know what happened. I did. I went to the lake and now I have an affair. I know it's my fault. I smart. They, they still believe, uh, <laughs> rightly or wrongly that, that, that water is the, is the yeah. cause of all. No, moisture is a cause of all these problems. Well, but I think yeah. it's nuanced is what is what you're saying is right. that, of course, I mean, yeah, exacerbates a situation that was already yeah. there. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the, exactly. Because I tell clients all the time, I like I have a favorite cleaner, um, right? It has no alcohol in it. It's it's lovely smelling. It, it's cheap. Um, and I tell clients who have dogs that swim a lot or, you know, in Florida, we do everything outdoors, everything with water because um, we have have it. <laughs> so I told them like, if you take your dog on the boat, if your dog swims, et cetera, um, flip their ear up and, you know, dump some of this cleaner in there, massage it around and you're finished. Um, and it does seem to prolong the interval in between actual ear infections, but I don't think that the ear infection that results in a coincidental timeline with such water activity is a single factor. I think it's a multifactorial yes. thing, but all that we see, cause we can't see what's going on in the ear canal all the time. All we see is that, oh, they got in water. Now they have an ear infection. Right. And, but I do think that cleaning them with an appropriately recommended ear cleaner helps. I think it can flush out something that was going to bloom or whatever right there. And so, yeah, yeah so because Again, it's a nuanced thing. So it's tricky for, for owners who are like, look, man, I just want my dog not to have an ear infection. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. And so we have and, to do many things. Yeah. And, and for dogs that are atopic or have environmental allergies that are prone to getting ear infections, then like a weekly ear cleaner, like I'll recommend a weekly ear cleaner. Uh -huh. um, and I think that helps flush how allergens that can be getting in the ear, or maybe there is a little yeah. minor infection starting, it moves it out. And I think it keeps a lot of these dogs under control. Yeah. Okay. So that gets to like the thing that I hear all the time. So I cringe. Do you ever have clients come in and tell you that they clean their dog's ear with like vinegar? <laughs> um, a few, yeah. Hydrogen a peroxide, few. alcohol. Yeah, that one I cringe. Right. I mean, straight vinegar, I will cringe, but... I, I, 
don't think there's too much harm in like half, like, you know, half water, half vinegar. Uh-huh. Hydrogen peroxide, yeah, that might be a little. <laughs> well, you got to think about it. Sometimes when a client says vinegar, you just imagine just holding the <laughs> here. <Yes>. Oh, <laughs> it's going to clean it all up. You know, right? I mean, people are, they're just trying to do what's best for their dog, they right? Are. And so they, they, they are. And the internet yeah. is full of all of these different things. And I'm like, you know, yeah. it's so cheap to just get an ear cleaner from your vet. Right. It's this yeah. like it's almost as cheap as the bottle of vinegar that you're buying that could be destroying <laughs> or somehow inflaming the canal if you don't mix it right. right. So, so like right. just don't risk it, man. It's cheap enough. Get one that's recommended and use it. And and there's tons of them out there, right? Um, but when they're cleaning the ear what like what do you tell do you tell them like stick a q-tip in there like you do your own ear or like what are you telling owners to do you're not supposed to stick a q-tip in your own ear either dr jen you're not i'm just saying like people Look, I just look. People right. come in me all kinds of stuff. I know people do, but you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like you're doing that. Well, That's I don't, right. I don't want to presume. Like, I want Dr. I'm Rosales presuming. to educate all of us right now. Right. Like, maybe <laughs> dogs are different. All right. Maybe yeah. I'm doing it wrong, right? So, yeah. So. Um, the way I tell clients is um to apply the ear cleaner into the ear, so they're kind of flooding that ear canal with the solution and, and I have a little model we'll show them and um and then you massage yeah exactly you massage the ear canal um and that's gonna sort of mix that solution with the debris in the ear the pet typically is going to want to shake their head which is awesome because then they just kind of all that comes out you know, make sure you're doing this in a room that you don't Cl- mind. Close your yeah. mouth. Close your mouth. <laughs> close close your mouth. your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, and then just getting a little cotton ball or preferably those little soft gauze and just wrap it around their finger and just go in there and clean. And okay. um, no so Q-tip. No Q-tip. You don't jam anything in there. Um, God forbid you go down too far and you hurt the eardrum, which kind of would be hard because as we know, a dog's ear canal is an L, it's kind of L shaped. It's not like right. us, which right. is, right. um, but you straight, can still jam it really hard, hard in you that, could, like yeah. in that junction and you're and, and in the that dog's little like, junction. Hey. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that's really close. I tell people a good idea is that if you can't see it, don't stick it past there. Right. Yeah, right. that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe um, little, they have all these little grooves and crevices it, here. Well, just, maybe the little Q tip can help with that. Mm-hmm. But, um, except yeah. in Cosette's case, when you can just kind of or rag right all the way through one side <laughs> to the other. Right. And for the, and she for has those the cleanest you, ears ever. And for those of you who are listening to us on one of the directories, um, go to our YouTube channel because we are put, we're going to have video over this that kind of describes what we're talking about when you're looking at the ear canal and what you want to avoid and why you really should use your finger like she's recommending because you can't stick your finger d- very far down in there. Exactly. Um, and Pretty so, blunt. you know, but don't stick a Q-tip where you can't see it. Don't stick a Q-tip down into your dog's ear canal uh, because you're going to create a bigger mess for us as the veterinarians and you're going to hurt your dog. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And if you've been doing it wrong up till now, it's okay. It's, it's okay. You could do it better now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And all those ear cleaners, that's the other thing. All those ear cleaners are made to help break up that debris right. um, so that when you're doing that ear massage, you're, it's like a washing machine, right? It's like, it's like, yes. it's breaking it up. And then the dog flings it out. Cause that's why they shake their head <laughs> is to fling it out. Yes. I like that description, the washing machine. Mm. But yes. that. <laughs> all right. I got one, I got one part, right. Cause we see yours all the time, right? <laughs> I'm pretty machine. sure she stole that from me, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> Indeed. Maybe. Um, yeah. And so, um, I, and I do, cause I do think it's a struggle for owners. So I'm, I'm so glad to, um, to hear that like allergies contribute. And I took that nugget for those of you who are listening, my head exploded at another episode where Dr. Rosales dropped some knowledge in the chat room about the only thing that your dog may present with when they have a food allergy may be chronic ear infections. Right. Um, so now, 
Yeah. Right. I was like, wait, what is happening? And so now when I see that dog for that third ear infection inside of, you know, two months or something, I'm like, I think we should talk about food. And the clients are like, what? Yeah. yeah. What bacon? What? <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, uh, so we start that, you know, that diet trial, uh, to try to try to get rid of that. So it is an allergy and in Florida with the pollen in the ears, it can be seasonal, but it's let your nice. vet, yeah, you let your vet explore, uh, what's causing it, um, and how we can stop it from happening. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I think that's wonderful. Okay. So next question is when, because mostly we treat the ear topically, right? So treatment for ear infections, um, cause we've talked about signs. We've talked about causes. We've talked about, um, diagnostics with that cytology. Uh, we've talked about prevention, but, um, so now, um, when do we use kind of topical? Cause I usually use topical treatment topical where we drop it in the ear. Um, but okay. when do you use systemic antibiotics or, or do you? Yeah. So for otitis externa, so the external part of the ear, the ear canal, really the best thing is topical. It's just going to, the medication is just going to concentrate there better okay. um, to treat the infection. Systemic, so oral medications like oral antibiotics are unlikely to concentrate there well. I'm not going to say they can't. Um, your vet would probably have to use pretty high doses of okay. that antibiotic to get in there. So, you know, when I've had some really tough chronic ear infections where I don't think the topical is working, then, then I might add on a systemic, but nine times out of 10, your vet is just going to do a topical. Okay. And that should work if you're applying it properly. So again, going back to what we talked about, taking that pain away, taking the inflammation, putting enough drops to get down that ear canal. Um, I think that's a big one because a little poodle is going to be treated with different amount of drops <laughs> than a great Dane. <laughs> so let's keep that in mind. Um, and it's, okay, it's and okay if you, owners. it's okay if I have to send home two bottles of medication yes. to get through the yes. thing, because they don't want them to be stingy. Like owners don't be stingy, put the medication no. in. Yeah. Yeah. So you might see that difference or why your vet's sending you with like, so like some of my big dogs need four bottles. Like they're in there. These, unfortunately, it's not like these pharmaceutical companies are making these giant bottles right. of ear mist for us. They're tiny. And so when your vet says 10 drops, it, it's 10 drops versus mm -hmm. a little poodle might need four drops. So yeah. there's, there's a difference, but that's important. Yeah. The topical and then the only other time I will use systemic antibiotics if it's um, maybe a middle ear infection or an inner ear infection. So that, and that's when they have the head tilt. When head, the head yeah. tilt, they're showing neurological <laughs> signs. Yeah. So right. So that's yeah. when we'll use. Them. Those are much more serious and another big mm -hmm. topic discussion. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so, uh, my kind of my, a little bit, my last question is, so how important is it? I think, you know, like, you know, this, how important is it to treat for the full amount of time that your veterinarian is recommending? Oh gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> super important, super important. Um, typically we, I like to see my patients back in two weeks maybe yeah. three weeks just because I refer all. So it's hard for some clients to come more often, yeah. but yeah, you, you need to treat till, you know, your vet sees your pet back and, and you, they re-examine the ear. Um, improper treatment is one reason why um, you might see recurrent infection because the ear is just not completely treated well. And it's another reason why we see um, resistant bacterial infections. So, so yeah. that's a big one because we're not treating it for the full length of course. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah. that goes along with the full amount, right? That also ties mm -hmm. in. You yeah. got to give the full amount yeah. at, for the full length of time. Uh, full otherwise you'll time. be back there again, right? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So no different than, 
you know, like a pet with a skin infection and you treat with antibiotics, the right dose for the right length of time. And yep. it has to get rechecked again to make sure all that infection is gone. Um, so yeah. the other, the other thing that people do, um, when they come in is they'll say, Oh, I just had them groomed. The groomer did it right. <laughs> like the dog was fine. And the groomer did <laughs> the poor it. Poor groomers. They get blamed. For I, know. I know. Sometimes, they get blamed for a lot of stuff. Sometimes but, right. At least sometimes wrongly. It's but so now nice. a lot of times too, they'll come to me and say the groomer found this and said, yeah, I should yes. yeah. to be seen, which I love Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, who's your groomer. I want to send them a gold star in the mail. Right. <laughs> Because, um, so when group, so is, do you think it's inappropriate when, um, a dog's getting groomed for groomers to pluck the hair out of the ears? If there's a lot of hair, um, in the ear and, or to maybe put some of that appropriate ear cleaner in the ear after the bath. What do you think about that? Do I think it's appropriate, yeah. um, or okay, or should they never do yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think for some of these dogs with a lot of hair in their ear, um, it's okay to kind of trim that. Um, it should be done gently. So I, I could see where if it's aggressively plucked, where that can cause some inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, and yep, and they can get their ear clean kind of normal. Um, I think a dog that has tendencies to get ear infections because of their allergy then I do like having that hair removed because I think it just blocks things in there. Again, not that I think the hair is causing the ear right. infection, right. not letting air in. It's just like you guys are saying an, 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 another nuance there. It's, it's blocking. Yes. It's not letting the ear get cleaned well. So um, I, I do think I, I do like the, the hair removals. And sometimes we'll see some doodles and they'll come in for us to just kind of gently pluck those hairs out for them. Yeah. Say, and and then, say, same here, same here. Like when I treat them, we, we clean them. And a lot of times if they're really bad, um, I don't know why those doodles, doodles, poodles, they, they have all that hair in there. Yeah. We will, we will gently, and it takes a minute, right? So, Hey, give your vet a minute, um, to pluck that hair out gently. Cause we don't just rip it all out. Right. Um, yeah. We, we gently pull it out so that the dog hopefully is not uncomfortable. The skin is not on fire. Um, right. And then we're able to really, really get them cleaned and flushed and the hair doesn't, um, hold moisture in there. Uh, right. you know, that sort of thing. So yeah, again, it is nuanced. It's not the only cause. Yeah. So, right. so Dr. Jason, yes. do, you, do you get many ear infections? Do I personally get many ear infections? <laughs> As no, we're getting I, older. I'm actually really good about cleaning my ears. So I don't think I've ever had an <laughs> ear infection, but I'm, I'm glad you asked. That's. That's really good. Do I get dogs uh, that have ear infections? Of course, everybody does. It's not, uh, it's not uncommon at, by any stretch of the imagination. So, but all of this stuff is great to hear that I was doing everything 100% right. I'm sorry that you obviously weren't, but I was doing everything 100% right as, as told by the expert. So I'm Naturally. good. I'm going to keep, keep, stay the course here. So naturally yes all right. uh all right so any other thing that you wish every pet lover knew about ears and their pet dr rosales any other um you know yes. pearl? yeah so a big one i'm glad you asked that <laughs> um I, I guess the big one which you guys are we've already been talking about that it's not normal for a dog to keep getting ear infections and sometimes i'll hear that from clients like oh it's like three ear infections a year and it's just it is that's and just how he is that's, right that's not normal at all so back to there's an underlying cause typically an allergy um my big one and and this is for especially pet owners who have like frenchies uh, brachycephalic dogs so frenchies pugs english bulldogs they normally their ears are normally already narrowed their ear canals are, are narrowed and, um, and again, because everything is squished in their head. And if they get an ear infection, that narrows that ear canal even more. Um, and just imagine years of ear infections, that canal is just closing down. And again, because I'm referral and I probably see the worst of the worst, I see a lot of brachycephalics have had years, five years, six years, all their lives with ear infections. And, and now they come to me and they want to get this solved. And 
and I can't anymore in many of them because the ear canal has reached a, a point we call end stage where the canal just completely shuts down. Um, I wish I had a model. Ah. And we'll the anti-inflammatories that we talked about are important to open up the ear. It won't do it anymore because the ear yeah. canal is scarred and closed down. And so pet owners, veterinarians who see the first time ear infections on these brachycephalics, like cannot ignore it, need to work them up for their allergies. So years right. down the road, and sometimes it isn't years down the road, it could be a year later, um, they don't end up with an end stage year that we can't fix medically yeah. anymore. At that point, it, it's a surgical fix and, and it's a really tough conversation to have with, with clients. So we have to be more yeah. proactive really about ear, um, we, we really do especially yeah. in those kind of brains. Well, we'll get the word out about the allergies for sure. Cause that doesn't, uh, you know, it makes perfect sense when you talk about it, but it's not the first thing people think of. It just is not. And right. it's, well, it's, yeah. the same. It's, a, it's a little bit of a conversation to have. So it is, but it's the yeah. same skin that's all over their body. It's just wrapped Correct. around a little tube and stuck down. Yes. There. Right. And so yes. right. You can exactly. imagine that, you know, it's just a bacterial party. When well, it sure, when you put it that way, it's super easy, Dr. Jen. That's why you <laughs> are who you are. Yeah, the ear is an extension of the skin. Uh, yes, cool. yes. Okay, yeah. well, um, I thank you for I, once again dropping serious knowledge on <laughs> us in the chat room. Um, we always love it because it's always so, um, so common sense, so applicable for pet lovers. It's just like, oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to start doing that. Um, and everyone listening, if you don't do anything, do this one thing, uh, go to your vet <laughs> sooner rather than yes. later. Groomers yes. and kennel folks, keep flipping those ears up and looking and encouraging yes. those owners to get them seen right away because we can do something about that. We have the technology. Uh, and so we, and we would love to. Um, so yeah. So Dr. Jason, anything else for Dr. Rosales? Yeah. Dr. Morning? Rosales is, is, is better, better quit it or she's going to put herself out of business is all I got to say. <laughs> all right. So, she better quit dropping all this fantastic knowledge. So <laughs> I know. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Well, we hope that you'll visit us again and we thank you so very yeah. much for coming. Um, so yeah. Thank so uh, yeah, I, I guess that's it. Um, I'm Dr. Jen, the vet. And I'm Dr. Jason. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. This episode is brought to you by Full Bucket Veterinary Strength Supplements, the leader in digestive health for dogs, cats, and horses. Merck Animal Health a leader in otic treatments for over 25 years.